Okay, when you're ready. Hey, welcome to UFO Academy. Nice to see you all. Um, we're going to crack straight on now with a talk from Colin Wolford. So I'm going to hand you over. Big round now for Colin, please. Hello, hello, the UFO Academy. This is going to be my first official presentation, so you're, you're kind of in a lucky position here. I've already done a slight um, talk already in the uh, Nottingham for the Amash uh, people, but um, this is my first official one. So this is me. I'm, my name's Colin Wolford. I'll be talking about music, movies, and metaphors. That's 2012 and beyond. Okay, so just, um, I'm going to be talking, I, I became interested in the UFO subject seriously in 1990, uh, I was doing serious studying on those, from those years, 1990, uh, 1994, something, the which is called the ET Papers I came across and the Dome Away, which I'll go into. Um, a lady I met in 97, Carol Cochran, she did a presentation here, um, I think, maybe this year actually, last year, I can't remember, and then I was... Dec my research led to decoding lyrics and songs and also decoding things like Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter and looking at films and books and movies and things like that. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so here we have, um, um, I, I bought this, the extraterrestrial papers. I used to go to Forbidden Planet in London. You could get like a, uh, you could get all UFO books and stuff there. I came across this interesting document uh, and this was published in 1994. And um, the, this is basically what was on the, um, uh, the uh, talking about what, was, what, what this is uh, happening. And um, it's basically, it says, on a hot summer night, 1993, the author was sleeping in the wood near his home in Canada. Suddenly, the night air filled with a strange sound and a glowing object hovered nearby. Tony established a telepathic bond with the ETs inside the craft who continued to communicate with him via messages actually mailed and left in his mailbox. Here is proof ETs mean us no harm and have a strong spiritual message. Okay, so the guy was basically, um, allegedly, he had a UFO sighting, and he was called um, Tony, basically. And this was in Canada, I should point out. This was in Canada. After his sighting, Tony went on to receive messages in his post from a Mr. X who he would converse with. Mr. X knew all about his sighting, and Tony. Mr. X was born on Earth, but had some memory of a life before amongst the stars. Mr. X claims every person on this planet is an Anunnaki uh, Earth-human hybrid. Mr. X goes on to reveal a lot about mankind's history. And that refers to something called the Dome Away, which I'll just explain. Okay, Mr. X, this is one of his quotes that he did in his letters. He said, you know, almost all of this is already out there. I'm just putting it all together for you. Over the years, a lot of this was sublimi subliminally introduced into man's reality. The methods varied from songs to movies to books, etc. The trick was to introduce knowledge without scaring people. Some of the greatest artists and writers were contributors. Those, the two songs are an example. This is referring to a conversation where he's, he mentioned uh, Peter Gable's Salisbury Hill and Phil Collins' song, Take Me Home, as an example of what was happening and, and, and that had relevance in those lyrics to that song. Um, June, is a, it's a, a popular, it was a book that came out uh, a while back now and it was turned into a film as well. It's, it's about as close as you will get to a history of the collective and the future of mankind. So it's implying that there was some truth to that story, which is the June sci-fi uh, book and film. But that, the, just to draw your attention to the, to the top part, that is, one of the, that is a very important statement, that top one, about how um, if all this is out there. Okay, so this was... Um, after I'd done that, I, I just got online to the internet, it was about 90, uh, 98 or something, and I found out there was a, infam or maybe 97 before that, 96, but this information was, had its own website, because I wanted to know more about this, because all I had was this little manuscript, and it, it was very interesting, there was only about 20 pages on it, but I felt that there was some you know, importance to it. So I just did a Google search, as you do, back in, back in the day, and I found out there was a website for it, and it was something called The Daughters of Ma, which was the way... Um, okay, and basically, this is just a precipice for that, it says, the coming of the Elohim, over 50,000 years ago, the planet Earth was visited by a race of beings from what is known as the Collective. The Collective is comprised of many different races who work together for the mutual benefit. All of these races, with but one exception, are the human race. These humans are the same genetically as those found on the Earth. They are from three main colony zones, Sirius, Orion, and Pleiades. And that's important to remember those three ones, because I'll be showing how that crops up a lot. 
that's just um, one of the index pages, just to give you a, an idea of the information. You can, you can go online, you can still find this, um, just Google the Dome Away, D-O-M-A. It stands for the Daughters of Mary, and I'll explain more about that. So just some important relevant bits. Um, it's, it's claimed the Earth was visited by combined mining and exploration force 52,000 BC. These were humans from the colony zone, Sirius, Orion, Pleiades. They genetically altered the, in, altered the indigenous pre-human animal existing here at the time. A lot of people have been saying things like this over the years, like um, Von Daniken and uh, other people um, come forward. Uh, there was a great war fought on this planet between two factions of this group. Okay, and there was a female side that won, and as a result, it was decided to try and train the Earth people in the art of civilization. Various teachers were sent throughout history to introduce a progressive system of moral and social guidelines. Like these beings, they were immediately deified. For the last 10,000 years, man has been guided towards civilization. So that's some interesting claims. Okay. Just a bit about here. Original sin, the first sin was not mankind's, it was the Elohim's. They genetically altered man for the purpose of slave labor and to enlarge their own vanity. The ability to conceive was increased from a yearly cycle to a lunar-based one. A war over this was won by a group of females. These women are in charge of all related projects. These are known as, known as the daughters of Ma uh, or Mary, but I'll go on to that. Don't mind. Okay. It continues. The leader of the females is the daughter of a Syrian family. Her name is Mara Ash. On earth, she was called many names. She was worshipped as a goddess. She was called Ma Ash Ish Isis, Mara, Mary, etc. The Elohim is the combined name of the ruling families. The rest are Anunnaki and um, the book of Genesis. And again, you can see how things have been changed over the time. So just looking at um, popular images of um, uh, Mary, uh, there's, uh, there's one to do with like a patron of the seas, uh, Stella Marie, which is another name for her. And of course, there was a very interesting thing back in the early 1900s so where there was a, the, the Fatima visitations, which happened in Portugal. And um, let's go on. That's a, that's a cosmic, that's a picture I found, which I've had for a while, which is I really like sort of cosmic, showing the cosmic Mary or the mother Mary. Okay, so we've got a serious thing going here, so we should just bring it up to date with some other people talking about serious. So we've got the um, Robert Temple, 1987's book, Was Earth Visited by Intelligent Beings from a Planet in the System of the Star Sirius? It's a very good book if you haven't read that. And it's showing that um, the Dogon tribes were visited um, by people they claimed were called the Nomo. Um, these are some of, they, they left these images of the fish, these are called them the fish people, and they came from the Sirius star system, and this is before anyone knew that even the star system, you know, was out there. Um, the fish god Enki, the Nomo, Oannes, this is other names for the um, fish type people. Jesus was associated with a fish, and the age Pisces, he said to his followers, come follow me and I will make you the fishes of men. There is some interesting things that seem to tie in a lot of religious stuff with possible these ET uh, star nations. Okay, I'm going to switch it here and go on to something called the Dulce uh, base because, again, it, it ties in with these three star nations, Sirius, Pleiades, Orion. I uh, don't you can read that, but basically this is, this came, this is um, the, the, a picture of that. Um, I'll read it from there. The base came to light when security officer Thomas Edwin Costello spilled the beans in a document known as the Dulce Papers, which he circulated in the early 1980s. By then, the project had been going on for a considerable time. Costello had taken the documents from the Dulce Underground facility and he backed them with a videotape and over 30 black and white photographs. He had worked as a security officer at the base until 1979, but by then he had had his fill of what was going on in the complex and decided to part company with his secretive employers. But before he left, he stole some documents and removed the security videotape. It showed various views of the underground complex from the base's control center. He made five copies of the documents and hid the originals. The copies were distributed to the UFO community via intermediaries. So he was basically, um, there was things going on, and these, they had lots of different levels, like the lower down you go, there was a place like, called like, Nightmare Hall, where there was all these horrific genetic experiments and things going on with the greys and these vats. You may have heard similar stories from abduction and things, but this is interesting because he had, well, we haven't got the actual evidence, and supposedly this is concealed somewhere in um, one of the deserts. Um, did touch on these three star nations, so that was an interesting coincidence. Let's just show you some of the air levels there. Um, cryogenic storage, genetic experiments, alien housing. This is all uh, believed to be, you know, part of the Americans 
jointly working with VTs, and um, there's a lot of contro controversy surrounding the Dulcie facility. Okay, so the uh, main reason I put this up because um, this is quite rare photo pictures, because these are just diagrams that um, Thomas had actually seen inside the base. Um, so it ties in with what I was saying. So this is um, supposedly the emblem of the Syrians. So that means like a, a triangle, circle, and a cross. And the beginning of the Orion group sketch. I don't know what that means. Like a cube. There's something inside there with a liquid. It's not the best picture, but obviously it's a diagram from, a, from what he actually saw inside the base. Pleiadians. This is a snake or going up a tree of some sort of the crescent moon. A bit on the serpent race. He some said some reptoids are native to this planet. The ruling caste of aliens are reptilian. The beige or white, white beings are called the Draco. Other reptilian beings are green and some are brown. They were an ancient race on Earth living underground. He may have been one of the draconian beings that tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden. Reptoids rightly consider themselves native Terrans. Perhaps they are the ones who we call the fallen angels. Maybe not. Either way, we are considered the squatters on Earth. So it deals with like three nation, star nations there, and it's also talking about reptilians who have come up a lot, of course, recently as well. Okay, I'm going to switch now to crop circles. This is a um, 2001 Milk Hill uh, formation, still for me, one of the greatest uh, formations that I've um, ever seen. I still think there's a real truth and, uh, to the crop circle ph phenomena, despite all the Doug and Dave and things like that have come out. But... Um, Let's, have, let's go on. This is Carol, and she gave a presentation here, like I was saying last time. Um, I met Carol at a presentation in London. It was on the eve of the death of Princess, Princess Diana, 1997, that, that, that morning, just before she, she was, um, died. So um, it was very, very interesting. It sort of blew my mind because she revealed a lot of information in her presentation about crop circles and information encoded into crop circles. Uh, and funny enough, there is the serious letter. So again, got the serious thing. So I'm thinking, oh, this is interesting. We got serious. Okay, so she code information called Lexi. Um, for instance, she would she would go into sort of trance state. She would where the crop circles would appear, like Alton Barnes Wiltshire. She would get from that certain amount of letters that could be decoded, and while entering an altered state, they would sort of rearrange, and then these messages would come out. And Carol could go into a lot more about that, and you can actually read her book online for free, um, but this is important because it, it goes into a lot of the things that I've noticed what were being represented in music and stuff later on. So just to give you an example of some of these messages, um, it was saying, we are not alone, the letters are here in this area, we sent a series, the letters are at all these sites, the answers are in the letters, read the letters, we send, learn who we are. We are Syrian, we twirl the wheat, we are the real artists. And Isis introduced here, star sister, Osiris, star brother. These are sort of recognised as being from the Egyptian myths and that. But, um, okay, wait's near here. Isis, Osiris are with the nine. Talk about that, about that later. It is his wish, it is her wish that the hate that is risen in the earth is laid to rest. It is their wish that we are well. Isis will start the will that will bring the renewal. The tone, the one note is here. It is in the one it is in the stones. The area is a star map, an interstellar site. Be aware, Atlantis rises. It's important, eastern states, western I West Irish Isles. The seas are rising now. Be aware, twisters to hit Earth. Tell all who will listen. So, no wars, Star Wars. Star Wars tilts the Earth. Warn all the others. Liberate Tibet. It's a bit about that. Raise the trees. Heal the Earth. A bit at the bottom. Why is on this earth? Okay, so a bit about the uh, Isis Osiris again. With the, these messages are in different places. One stone under Stonehenge, decoded from Stonehenge, the signs are there to see. So you can get the feeling of what it's saying. It's repeating a lot of the, the messages. Um, they're basically saying they're Syrian, they're connected with the crop circles. The tone, again, it refers to music, it's sort of a musical sort of thing. So they're so implying that this tone, the one note is in the stones, and people still don't really understand what Stonehenge was for. People see it as some sort of amplifier, maybe something connected to music possibly, maybe um, people, the idea is that maybe there's something encoded into the stones or it's, it's something that can change our reality even. Um, it talks a lot about singing songs, it's a wish for these, these beings, whether you consider that, um, they don't consider them gods or anything, but they're about higher beings, but they, they wish to sing a new song to raise the earth to a higher state, listen to the earth's heart, listen to the heart. 
Um, you see anagram, of course, earth is heart, it's an anagram. You, you start seeing all these little things appearing in words where you can sort of do your own little anagrams, although Carol's work isn't anagrams as such, it's a lexigram. Okay. So, raise the trees, raise the one tree, listen to sh this, learn to share this earth, this one world, share the, uh, share the earth or shatter the earth, share the earth and shatter the tarnish. We wish to aid, or aid this earth, will those on this earth allow aid? Some people are kind of freaked out that we might be <laughs> you know, dealing with ETs and that, but there are those who wish not to aid earth and will not aid earth. Um, we are those who will see the DNA and the asteroid art, see the signs, we are the real artists, the signs herald a new world. The angels are here now, the earth, a wise here, is here now, this earth. I'll catch some more ones saying about we are Syrian, uh, no, no wars, no Star Wars. Um, more again, angels on this earth. We wish to ourselves gain ascension. This ascension thing comes up quite a lot, that people see in New Age, but there's a big shift on this way. We may be on the middle, actually in the midst of it. Isis will start the renewal, she will restart the wheel. Um, Isis and the wheel is quite. It's like the wheel. We're at. There's this story about the, the wheel. We're at the end of the, the wheel of this, this age. Basically, we're at the end of the age. Isis and Osiris will sing a new song. Isis and Osiris with the nine. It's time to end the world. To end the old order. New world order is the same as the old order. It is in the wrong hands and it's a danger to earth. It is time to bring into the relentless totalitarian dogma. So they're saying we're not God, Starship, and talking about Starship to the Ionosphere, talking about Foth, which is another from the um, old days. Okay, just an important one about twisters. There's a, stuff, a lot of stuff about twisters hitting the planet. Um, alert the well, but twisters that hit the earth, very big twisters, Carol's put in there, with torrential rains. Um, see happens, Syria and I are starting a new partnership. Raise the trees, raise the yew, the elm, ash, rowan trees. It's quite appropriate that we're in there. Formerly Elm, I'm Melna. <laughs> this time, the last, this time, the last seal. Share this material. Data made easier with the letters. The artist made the letters. The artist, our master, letter Smith, the master rested here. Some people believe that Jesus visited um, the areas of Glastonbury and the West Country. So that's kind of maybe tying tying in with that. Again, about this sacred marriage between Isis and Osiris. Some people, because sometimes the people refer to Sirius and Orion, they see that as connected to, with, um, you know, representing Sirius and, and, and Osiris. A bit more about the Indian elders. Uh, be aware of those others. Not, there are, be aware that there are others not of this world who do not wish to assist and will not assist. There's obviously claims that we're just showing you about the underground facilities and the greys and some other ETs. So it's not really fair to scar all these ETs as being negative because there are, I believe, friendly ETs. Uh, a bit about Atlantis. Apparently Atlantis vanished many, many, perhaps 12,000 years ago. Or, um, or however long it was. Um, Atlantis rises east states, west over shower. Twisters hit earth. We are Syrian. We are near here. We return this earth by end of this century. Isis Starsis just, uh, waits near here. Or Eve Starsis awaits with Isis. Uh, Eve was very brave. This is sort of um, dealing with the sort of idea of the um, Eve, the first woman. Oh, there. Um, coming to the end of these little um, just messages, just wanted to give you a basic idea of it all. Um, the bottom part's kind of interesting. It says, see, see Ashanic artistry at these sites. Ashanic artistry, twelves we. Ashanic, it's t ties in with the ash thing. I was talking about the Isis and ash and the other name. But also about the artistic ability in the blue scarab race. And there's interesting things I'll show later about the colour blue and these ETs, which is kind of interesting. Um, just more of the same, really. More of the stuff about the uh, vert style. Bit about the bottom, about be aware, US alien test site, US bases, aliens lease US bases, so it's highlighting that. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, we're going to go into a little, just a quick bit of music thing before later on. And this is a single by the Super Fairy Animals, which I was listening, because I spent 20, I was, had a job where I could listen to music pretty much all day, so I could just pretty much do a, like a data input job and just tune out and just listen to music and I was going, just, I felt important to listen to all sorts of music but one of the, I'd been reading a book, um, and Michael Green it says in his book Harbingers of the World Change talks of the rods of power, the solar logos is showing carrying a rod in each hand, one for the initiation of humanity and another for the Devic world, the sun god at Tiwanaku in the Andes. 
holds the two rods, which are snakes. The three-eyed, which is funny because it says, this is in his book, but this is not a picture of that's in his book. The three-eyed solar deity found that Chochanaraya in Eastern Europe also carries two rods, but these are tridents. Nearer home, of course, we have the long man of Wilmington in Hill in Sussex who carries two rods, and you can see that, the Wilmington long man. So it's interesting that this is a single for um, Northern Lights, which is a super furry animal circa 99, I think, around that time, 98, which is all this interesting thing was happening, and I found it very interesting that in Michael Brick, this is a book about crop circles, that he, he's somehow the artist who is creating the art, tapping into information that's out there. So po possibly this is, there's also this fish thing I was talking about earlier, so this could be a Syrian entity of some sort. And then um, that's lat latitude and longitude on those two poles he's holding. That's interesting. That was a crop circle I went into this year, just to show you a crop circle. That's the only one I went into, but that's a good one. This is another source. It's okay, so I was interested in Sirius and the Orion and all that thing. And one of the people who um, I actually met when I got into the Syrians, because um, Sheldon claims uh, he, he had uh, his, um, experiences all his life, and he says he, he doesn't channel as such because he has his implants, and you may hear a lot of channeled information. And he does, free, he, he does his updates every week, basically. And, very interesting. I mean, a lot of people don't like the channeled information, but it's out there and you can read about it and you can take it and it may resonate with you. But I was interested because it was talking about the Syrians and that was what I was interested in. And I had a chance to actually meet Sheldon and his, and his partner. I went to the Denver Galactic Gathering Conference a few years ago and found him very sincere and, he's, and very, very interesting. And I still um, I attend a lot of his webinars online. Very interesting. And he talks a little bit, I nicked this from Sheldon, actually, his presentation, so just, it was a picture of the inner earth, because it's another controversial issue, but people don't think that there is an inner earth, but this is a picture that he uses, and there's supposedly two entrances, one in the north and one in the south pole, and the idea of an inner sun, and um, so it's not only these, e these ETs that are coming to meet us, uh, visit, um, there's also the inner earth people, people talk about Agatha and things like that. And I just wanted to show that because people talk about ETs, but there's also these, these people that are supposedly in inner earth, uh, Shambhala and things like that. So I want to make people aware of that, but it's not just people visiting from outside of our uh, star nation, uh, outside of, you know. It's just another picture of a Agatha. Uh, and there's a little bit of that Sheldon had in, I just also borrowed the other slide. And it, I wanted to sh what I wanted to show here, because he, sh sh on the far top corner, talks about Vega. Humans origin, he claims, it actually began in Vega in the Lyra constellation. And um, he's a bit about the dinosaurs and, and the reptilians claimed ownership of the entire galaxy. The galactic humans and their allies disagreed, and they res this resulted in a galactic war that lasted millions of years. So I thought that was important with the subject I was dealing with. Another source is uh, Mike Quincy. He's actually a, a, an Englishman, and um, he also does um, information regarding the Syrians and the source called Salusa. And again, you can, re you can read these. It's all free online. He, he does updates every week or so. So now I'm going to go to talk about a bit about metaphors of what I've talked about before. So this is just what is a metaphor, basically. It's a figure of speech in which a term or phrase is applied to something to which it is not literally applicable in order to suggest a resemblance. Two, something used or regarded as being used to represent something else, an emblem or symbol. And I'm going to kind of show that with, with the films and the music side of thing, in relation to Carol's messages and also some of the other stuff. So this is one of my favourite. Anyone not seen Star Wars here? Ever, everyone knows what Star Wars is, yeah? No? no. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm kind of thinking that, well... I was in that frame of mind of looking into music and it had all this stuff and things were encoded and like that guy was saying that there was, you know, this is how they're getting the, this information across nowadays. So it's all hidden in films. And obviously Star Wars implies, if you think of it just on the name, it's a war amongst the stars and people say that's our galactic history. And of course you could see the Empire was being in control of our planet at the moment. There's a lot of dark people around and the Illuminati they talk about. So you can see, again, that's a sort of metaphor of, you know, as much as a science fiction story, it could actually be a lot closer to home and it's probably actually about us in some way. <laughs> and um, uh, talking about the Jed, this is going to show on the other slide, the Jed. But this is the idea that um, this could be the return of Osiris, uh, or the truth, or the, our ancestors, something coming back. And 
because you know it's these little um, synchronicities with the, with the words and things in Star Wars and stuff like that. And because the Jed Pillar was um, synonymous with um, Osiris, the backbone of Osiris, and uh, it's kind of interesting how these words come out like for George Lucas. And the Phantom Menace, you could also construe that as being, well, that sounds very much like, you know, Al-Qaeda, Phantom Menace. You know, the idea of staging false flag operations to blame other people. It's a jar, jar jar is like a word in Syrian that um, uh, Sheldon talks about Shalom. So again, this could be if construed as, again, he's encoded with Jar Jar being. Attack of the Clones, with um, the idea of brings in the idea of clones. A lot of people find it hard to believe that they could people can actually be cloned. Um, there is people who have claimed that they are either clones or clones have been going been made since the 1950s, that far back. Um, there's an idea built, an army built by the Dr. Kate Control during the end of the cycle. People like Michael Prince, also which um, James Casbolt's other name, he claims that he's been involved in all this and in clones and things like that. Some people have even claimed that presidents have been cloned. We just don't know what sort of technology the Illuminati, these people who control the world, what sort of degree they're at. I mean, it's pretty mind-blowing stuff, but, you know, it's, it's sort of, I think it's important to raise that in regard to the Star Wars. And, um, and there's a bit in Star Wars where they activate all these clones, so maybe people have said, oh, they're going to activate people at certain times, there's going to be martial law and all this thing, so I thought that's kind of um, yeah, just a little bit of an anagram of Sif there. So basically, this is your sort of protagonist type characters, you know, the Dark. Um, Darth Vader, Darth Vader Dutch is for father. That's interesting. There's lots of, there's so many things. It's like it's almost channeled that they, George Lucas did this book. And of course, Anakin Skywalker, it's Anakin. So you could, you know, associate Anakin and Anarchy being the father aspect of mankind. So that would make sense. And Skywalker, of course, it implies. It's walking the sky, that would be people from the start. So you can see that this was a metaphor in the film, I'm your father, and an the Anunnaki confronts mankind. A lot of people think this is all going to come out maybe very soon, that they're going to find out that our origins aren't actually through um, evolution as such, but from these star beings. Um, and unfortunately, the Anunnaki were quite a dark race. And so this is, could be seen as Darth, it could be seen as our father aspect talking to mankind, mankind as Luke Skywalker finds out representing mankind that you know he wants to, you have to join him and I think that's what he was trying to show in that, in in the film. So mankind's not ready to face um, the Anunnaki, the father aspect, and all these people are going to get really worked up. I went to David Icke last night, and you know there's people you know they know they've been we've all been lied to to some. To, to some various degree, we just don't know, you know, how how bad it is at the top, and of course, all this stuff's coming out about, you know, Jimmy Savile and all these um, molestation type things, and we just and how how high it goes, and we seem to be finding out that there is at the top of the pyramid there is some real high high corruption. At least it's a more calm Luke Skywalker, who sort of was, <laughs> he says like mankind, where he's fully aware of the fact that he's. He, um, you know, these connections and being drawn into anger, as like David Icke said last night, is not, you know, you, you become one of them. You literally become the monster that you're trying to sort of, um, you know, cut your, cut your ties with. Instead, you know, if, you, if you're going out writing and things, you're, you're not going to be helping your situation. And I want to tie it back with the Mother Mary type thing. This is an interesting bit because it shows you a Mon Mothma, which is um, the Rebel Alliance Supreme Commander. So... Mon, if you're interested in Mon talk, I mean that ties in. The Mon supposedly means a hidden god type thing. A mother, we got we got Moth, which comes from mother, and then Ma, which we're talking about the Dome Mars. It's we're talking the feminine aspect, um, and it ties in well with what's here because the Mon Calamari, she's not that Mon Calamari is one of the beings, uh, but it's not. She's human, but that being is actually um, an aquatic sort of Syrian type. So you can see there's a, a connection there. And then you've got the guy with, on the right, which is General Medine, and he was like um, uh, 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 the go-between. He was like um, giving the briefing. But again, it ties in with the Mahdi. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. The first, um, that's, the, that's an Islamic prophet, allegedly the next Islamic prophet. So I found that quite interesting. A um, bit about Mothma. That's the Virgin Mary Isis, the leader of rebellion. I was saying. That's General Mahdi. The, uh, talking about the Doma material, Medina is the second holy city in Islam, a burial place of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. 
think there's no coincidence here. And going back to your messages, which I was the, the, the guy, Mr. X and that, I mean, he turned out, the guy, he had this UFO sighting, the guy he was conversing with, it turns out, that in the end, he, he called himself the Mardi. So in some ways, uh, I, it ties in with, um, with this character here, which is in um, the Star Wars films. This is, and he was sent by the moon Isis, which is um, the goddess. Uh, there's again a possible Syrian type. We're talking about the Nomo. Um, the Admiral Akbar is um, another interesting name. And that, obviously, that's an expression in, in, in Islamic faith uh, for Islam, Al Hu Akbar. And so that's interesting. There seems to be some connection. Maybe there's another one. That looks like the one we saw about the, um, you know, the solar diety one. Uh, right here, there's the shield. Carbon freezing chamber. Um, I think this was just representing the Jesus on the cross, uh, basically, the, when, when he gets turned into um, uh, carbonite. Um, Landon Carrizin is playing the um, Judas role. Um, the crucifixion, so I think that's a, a depiction of the crucifixion. The body taken away. Okay, so you could say that was, um, uh, you know, a type of showing, or training Jesus in a way. The resurrection. And of course, one of the things was I, I, I had problems spelling Pleiades, and I actually found that there was seems to be coded information that that was referring to Pleiades because I, I never every time I can always spell the Pleiades right now because I know it's Princess Leia. So I think again it was showing new information, and even the names of the actress I found it kind of interesting. You could break things down, and and. And solo is interesting. Now, solo, a soul was reversed to the sun, but then we got the mon thing, which I was talking about earlier, and of course that comes into Sol Solomon, like the son of David. So, again, I think that was showing Jesus and that sort of bloodline, which is, you know, really interesting. Luke Skywalker, yeah, the son of Anakin, that I was talking about earlier, Mark Hamill, his father was a captain of the Navy. So, like I say, the people who actually play these people are very interesting. Uh, Anakin Skywalker, of course. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people say that. Oh, it looks like, um, you know, he does actually look like him. And people think Vatican is the root of all evil, actually. I mean, not to offend any of Catholic people or anything like that. But um, people do think there's a, they're keeping the lid on so many things that are hidden. So, you know, I just want to make that that this. He's always had these protagonists in all these films like Lord of the Rings and you know, Sauron and things like the Emperor's the real bad guy rather than Darth Vader because Darth Vader turns to light. As we're so, yeah, Shilton Nidal claims that the Anunnaki turned to the light in 1994, 1994 throwing the Illuminati Dark Cabal into crisis. There had been the minions of them since the fall of Atlantis some 12,000 years ago. And this is shown in the film Return of the Jedi where... Darth Vader throws the Emperor down the pit, almost like in the Bible where the Satan's thrown into the pit. The Anunnaki have turned to the light. So for mankind, it's a case of forgiveness is the key, and that's very important because that's what we're going to have to be dealing with. And people are you know, saying, <laughs> Ewoks can just refer to mankind, we're all sort of in that primitive state, and the defeat of the Empire and join the Galactic Alliance, possibly a first contact situation. But basically, it's a happy ending, and that's the Star Wars bit. So, looking at some other shows, the V. This is the mini series from 1983. Everyone's ever watched V at all? Yeah. Cool. Kind of freaky show. I mean, this is quite scary when you're like 10 years old. I mean, I was watching this with my brother, and there's like things like reptilians on TV, and um, of course, we're talking about the Draco Star Nation, and um, this this woman was, I think, it was Diana in the TV show, and she was re revealing her skin. It's an interesting film by uh, Brian Yuzna, producer of The Reanimator and From Beyond. It comes a rather disturbing 1980s look at the horrors of the upper class. Young Billy, that's played by Billy Warlock, feels a certain strangeness enveloping him in his bourgeois suburban neighborhood. A little sleuth sleuthing reveals a secret society which thrives on cannibalism, incest, and the ability to do something rather un otherworldly things during sex. So. It's a very interesting film. You see that it ties very much with what David Icke says, and then the whole, you know, this blood rituals where they, they, they drink blood and all sorts of stuff. But that's a very interesting film. We can track that one down. Of course, Dracula could be seen as, um, I know David Icke was talking about, you know, the, the, yeah, 
flared the um, and connection there. But I think it's just encoded in history that these names have been tied down with, like Bram Stoker, with the, with the names. It just refers to these, these off-world beings, and it was encoded in things like Dracula to make us aware that these beings were actually real. And we drink our blood. This is Dr. Ho Draconian. The Draconian Empire was a vast space-faring feudal civilization of reptilian humanoids centered on the planet Draconia with a society stratified along class and gender lines that was bound by strong code of honor. Game from 1988, which I'm. This one about the Syrians. So you can see how things are appearing in, um, you know, art and um, entertainment. Enemy Mine, the film about um, human and Drax, and basically um, they attempt to kill one another, but they, they basically cooperate in the end. That's another good film that sort of brings into the Drax. They learn to coexist. Stargate, this is interesting. I only watched the first series of it, but there was clearly a lot more going on in the other series. This was a follow-up to the film 1994. Being from, again, I was talking about awareness, these sea beings, and that was in the first series. I remember watching that episode, thinking, oh, that's interesting. So these are someone's obviously aware of their history of people talking about these, these amphibious nomo-type beings and, and actually putting them into the film. Or in, oh, it's just all a coincidence, but obviously there's some, someone knows something. Stargate Atlantis, never got around to seeing this, but I did some research into it, and um, it introduced the idea of the ancients and the enemies, the Wraith and the, uh, the Ori. Interestingly, Stargate brings the subject of Ascension into its main storyline and was introduced in Season 3 and became a central theme of Stargate and Stargate Atlantis. And that's the idea of, that people talk about, I was talking earlier about the shift, there's going to be a shift in consciousness, that there's new energies coming into the world, it's like Carol's men uh, um, messages mentioned that as well, so... There's a good book by, if you can get hold of that one, John King, the UFO Reality Magazine. This is, a, I, this is just from the, from the um, Wikipedia. Um, talking about, and this is, the, Ascension is a process by which a sufficiently evolved sentient beings may shred, shed their physical bodies and live eternally as pure energy on a higher plane of existence where their capacity for learning and power grows exponentially. It is a mental, spiritual, or evolutionary enlightenment that can arise as a direct result of achieving a certain level of wisdom and self-knowledge. Ascension was once employed by the ancients as a means to avoid several issues threatening their species of extinction. Ascension can happen in one of two ways, evolutionary or spiritually. Ascension can occur when a human evolves the, the ability to use approximately 90% of his or her brain capacity. Spiritual ascension can occur through meditation, when one is pure of spirit and in the search for enlightenment, has a fully open mind and has shed one's fears and attachment to the mortal world. And that's kind of similar to what people talk about when they talk about ascension in sort of New Age books as well. Not exactly the same, but pretty much more. So it's interesting that that's sort of encoded into Stargate, and this is one of the beings that are introduced in Stargate Atlantis, which is the Ori. And um, just put that in there because it, I'm just going to read it. A major threat in, this is on the story line. A major threat in the cosmos, the Ori are ascended beings who have used the advanced knowledge of the universe to force lesser beings to worship them. This sounds like the Anunnaki, of course. In essence, they used to be ancients, however, they split into a separate groups due to different views of life. The Ori are religious, while the ancients prefer science. The Ori sway less developed planets into worshiping, worshiping them by promising ascension through an invented and empty religion called Origin. Sounds like the origins of man. Like. This religion states that they created humanity and as such are to be worshipped by their creations. It is also promises its followers that on death they will ascend, which you could sort of say about the Christian and, and, and things like that and the Catholicism. However, origin was designed to channel energy from the uh, human worshippers to the Ori. As such, the Ori never help anyone else ascend because then they would have to share the power that they sap from their worshippers. The ultimate goal is to completely destroy the ascended ancients who they know as the others. All of their efforts, including their technology, are for the purpose of garnering worshippers. So you can see this is all a big metaphor, really, of life on Earth. That was a good book by um, uh, Phyllis Schlemmer, The Only Planet of Choice, and it introduced the idea about... Um, uh, the Council of Nine, and Gene Rodenberry even sat in on some sessions, and some believe he got the ideas from his famous TV series from here. Star Trek, 66, 69. Yeah. Deep Space Nine. So I think Gene Rodenberry asked the question, where, did, um, where were they based? And the, these beings for this channel, for, for the Shema, came back, where we came from Deep Space, and that's supposedly how the name for that series was created, Deep Space Nine. Of course, we talked about the Nine earlier with Carol's messages. First contact... Enterprise arrives in the past, uh, the day before humanity's first encounter of alien life, after Zephyr Cochrane's historic warp drive, the Borg are trying to prevent first contact. People see the Borg as being very much like these beings that are 
the, in, you know, the negative beings that are in control of Earth and such. Uh, of course, Cochrane ties in with um, Carol's name, which is um, Carol Cochrane. So, you know, the fact that she's bringing forth this information, I find it an interesting synchronicity that Cochrane ties in with First Contact. Harry Potter, okay, let's go. Harry Potter is like the character Luke Skywalker and the Hobbit, and I woke a mankind questioning everything and going on the hero quest with his friends, he confronts the dark. And again, this really ties in with mankind and what's happening now. Very popular in Watford with Leland Studios, of course, as well. The main protagonist, he's got these dark beings like Sauron and Voldemort and the Emperor. Um, the idea is that there may be some Antichrist type character that might appear during the end times, which they call the end of the cycle. So you can see that this is all encoded, that these characters could possibly be on their way. The main protagonist, uh, but will they, anyone believe he is about to return? The dark saviour destined for mankind to appear and to save our world from economic collapse and corrupt governments. Of course, everyone's, if things do fall apart, people do look outside themselves. They don't really think that they have themselves the answer to all the problems and, and are, can be taken in by people who have sort of advanced technology and, and occult ways. Dobby, because he has a metaphor for a slave, sleeping mankind, and he's kind of really like low self-esteem, down on it also. You know, if that's basically us. In the, well, unawakened, but mankind. But, uh, Sirius Black, of course, that was um, demonised um, in the books. And the reason being, of course, as I've just explained in the last half hour, is that the Syrians are one of the principal star nations involved in first contact. Can we then expect the demonization of this star nation by the powers that be? I'd put all your money on it. <laughs> Harry finds he is not alone following the death of his parents. He has a godfather, which is basically his um, galactic family. And that's basically implying black is dark and serious. That's why he's in prison doing time in Azkaban. Draco Malfoy, of course, it's all encoded there. So you've got the um, bloodlines, the Illuminati, Muggles, my blood, they're portrayed by the dark Illuminati's obsession with bloodlines, planet Earth ruled by 13 bloodline families. We can talk about the Queen later if we've got time. Bellatrix of Strange is another star nation. Darks have always been at work a long time in the government, secret government, Illuminati, Dark Cabal, mainly for occult means, high technology and satanic rituals. Bellatrix is a star nation, I think it's in the Orion somewhere, but um, it's associated with some negative being. And then things like the Crucio, you, this, there's so much I could do with the whole talk on Harry Potter, but you know, they, they refer to imperialist things encoded in there, and the people in government, are, you know, they're under the spell of imperialism and things like that, they're worried about their jobs, and it's reference to things like Jesus, crucifixion, the Cruciatus, and how that is all going to come out, there's so much stuff in there, but I haven't got much time. Dumbledore's army, people coming together and return to community spirit as people unite to throw off the dark ones. And that's people about like us even, and like coming together and people wanting to know the answers and, you know, forming communities and stuff. <clears throat> the Phoenix rises, that's the Earth reborn, and the Phoenix comes up quite a lot um, in, in information. I think David Ike talked about that last night as well. Uh, another one I'm just going to quickly go into, Dark Materials, another brilliant series, the Philip Pullman books, deals with the ideas that we have a higher self or soul, as well as looking at the dark dominion over us and mankind. Mankind's origins, and it's a modern day retelling of Adam and Eve, it's very good. Ever, anyone read these books? Yeah, yeah? brilliant. Yeah. This novel is set in a parallel world to ours. It's a world controlled largely by a theocratic international organisation, the Magisterium, which actively suppresses her heresy. A lot of this stuff would be, I'm talking about today, would be seen as heresy. <laughs> Lara is the daughter of Lord Azrael and Marissa Kelter. She finds herself embroiled in a cosmic war between angels and a pseudo deity called the Authority when she prevents Lord Azrael's death and allows him to further his studies on dust. So, yeah, but Lua's uncle, though, is a, is later about, he's actually her father, his demon is Stella Maria. So I was talking about how these words crop up, you know, like I was showing you the Stella Marie and things, and, and there's obviously so much, this is almost channeled information. I think Philip Pullman, he's like, again, it's really much what's going on here, and, um, you know, talking about the original sin, and, and even that Syrian government, little wretched, the, 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 one of the ladies from the, from the Egyptians, well, then there's the whole history there as well, of the Egyptian people, uh, gypsies, rescues Lyra. And of course, we were talking about um, showing you the Sheldon side. Oh, he was claiming that the um, mankind's origins actually come from the Lyra. Um, uh, so, you know, the, the, the main hero, heroine is the, the, the girl Lyra. Oh, yeah, of course, we can go on about that. It's basically the same as we're talking Star Wars. It's, it's the same themes about mankind and what's unfolding. Of course, Lord of the Rings as well. well Hobbit's coming out this Christmas. Uh, one ring to all them all. I mean, again, this is very much to all, you know, uniting the, the, the worlds and everything, the inner earth, and 
again, it's, you know, people resonate very much with the whole Jake, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings films, the Hobbit. And they've got these protagonist guys, you know, these dark forces that always show up when at the end of the movie, hold on. so I expect someone to come along sooner. That's a cosmic saviour scenario, basically. So they dressed up someone as being possibly of off-world. Um, I mean, for a lot of people, it would be quite shocked to find out that, that they may have a, a regions off-planet. And if someone comes along with high technology, then you can pull the wool over someone's eyes, and then that's what that slide is showing. So you should be on our toes and sort of question everything, basically. Babylon 5 is an important one. I'm going to rush through this a little bit. Um, Babylon 5, one well, of my favourite actually series. Um, I didn't see all that Star Stargate one, but I think f generally it's probably my most favourite uh, science fiction show. Um, it's just an analogy with the president. I know the election's coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, but in Clark President, with the weather of an Air Force carrying President Louis Santiago was destroyed in 2258, was complicit with the assassination in order to take office. He believed Earth to be in danger of being overrun by extraterrestrial races, and so the Night Watch, a fascist paramilitary organization, w was created to find out people suspected to be alien infiltrators or sympathizers. Some people are <laughs> like in the room today, probably. <laughs> president Clark swung in, and this is like a. This was so, it is a reenactment of that, basically. It was Lyndon B. Johnson being sworn in. So there's so much stuff encoded in these, these shows. And that's him being sworn on, on board the Air Force Two. It's an international homage to U.S. Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson's own ceremony aboard a plane televised to the nation immediately after the assassination of President John F. Kennedy on 22nd of November, 63. According to J. Michael Straczynski, it was co coincidentally shot on the anniversary. So you get these synchronicities with great art and things like that. Air Force Chairman of uh, Joint Staff, Chiefs of Staff, General William Haig, was suspected that Clark was involved in assassination and began a low-level counter-conspiracy event, including Captain John Sheridan. John Sheridan and General Haig found evidence that Clark had arranged the assassination of Santiago. Haig managed to get the evidence and introduced the Senate, which caused an uproar. Um, about the same time, it was revealed that Clark's forces had found a shadow vessel buried, buried on Ganymede. This sounds kind of like the Roswell site thing, where Clark was having... The ship studied in order to learn its secrets. John Sheridan took the White Star back to Ganymede and destroyed the vessel. Clark soon issued a decree of martial law using the Ganymede incident as an excuse. Clark dissolved the Senate and nationalised the media, like media outlets. So I think these are parallels with things that are about to happen or could, you know. Clark quickly turned the Earth Alliance into a dictatorship, making ISN into a propaganda machine. A lot of people see the media as propaganda anyway, but a lot of people question the thing. Considering Sheridan to be a threat, Clark targeted Babylon 5 and Sheridan specifically were a blockage and a propaganda war, the illusion of truth. That's the episode that's important. Eventually, Sheridan took the fleet directly to Earth and sent a message saying that they had come home to fight against Clark's tyranny, realizing that he would soon be captured. Clark committed suicide with a gun. With a gun. In one last vindictive act, he turned the planetary defense grid back on the Earth under a scorched, scorched Earth policy. And that was actually the death note that he had. It's kind of interesting because it's on, on this president when he, 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 was, he was found dead, but he had written this um, scorched earth. But it's interesting that it said the ascension of the ordinary man. I just found that really you know, profound that the president wrote this death note. And that was, that was actually encoded. You can actually see that on the episode. Uh, I think it's the fourth, fourth, fourth season, but just very interesting, the whole idea of ascension. Scorched Earth is sort of basically destroying all your assets, the sort of other people taking it, um, basically. A bit about Wizard, a tiny bit about Wizard of Oz, because so that's another occult book with stuff encoded in it, of course. You probably know that. The idea that these twisters that sort of take her from one reality to, to another, so I found very interesting because we were talking about the twisters stuff earlier. And also even Osiris and Isaac actually mentioned in that film. I don't know if anyone remembers that bit at the very start of the film. So what, what does music play? I'm going to go through this hopefully in 10 minutes. I think I've got 10 minutes left. Oh, no. Music can change our moods and uplift us. Classical music can calm us down, can be used as for good and bad. Mind control can be used, seen as a form of channeling. to thing can be seen as coming from the heart. Higher truths, I believe, are revealed through music. Decoding lyrics and songs. Okay, so lyrics and many songs are about us, mankind. That's the actual high, high truth of it all. The planet and the return of our brothers and sisters from the stars. Also encoded in them are references about the mother earth. Sometimes it's referred to it in the feminine. References to the goddess and her return. A coming storm is also talked about high winds and rain. The end of this age, walls coming down and an end to secrecy. Um, a crash in terms of the economy is talked about a lot in songs. I could go through a lot of songs and show you what they are. A reference to a dark saviour, possible antichrist scenario. Ascension is referred to in lyrics as a catching a form of transport. And there's lots of these little codes like they'll refer to bus, planes, trains, cars, taking a lift, escalator, a ladder or stairs. And that's all encoded into music lyrics. Um, 
also talks about a return to full consciousness after a fall, which a lot of people say we've been for a fall in consciousness, the transformation of man and the beginning of a new age of love and light. Um, I just want to use this as an example, um, just as a basic example, I might want to read that. This is a song from Blue Tones. A lot of the indie music I find pretty much has all the music. Fine. And so, it's just saying, where did, this is a song from mankind to these galact- from galactics to mankind. Where did you go when the things went wrong for you, when the knives came out for you? Where did you go? All you needed was a friend, you just had to ask and then. You, didn't have to, you don't have to have the solution, you've got to understand the problem and don't go hoping for a miracle. All this will fade away, so I'm coming home. This is then returning to the start of to the earth. What did you learn? Locked away all on your own, chance in your head all blown. What did you learn? It was unfortunate. You missed your chance to find out that. You don't have to have the solution. You've got to understand the problem. And don't go hoping for a miracle. All this will fade away. So I'm coming home. I'm coming home, but just for a short while. And it's interesting because on Carol's message, it mentions they stay, stay a while. So I thought it's very profound. <laughs> and the last lyric it says, oh, but just for a short while. So my basic music stuff started happening after doing... Um, I was listening to this album, um, Bomb the Bass, and I won't go into that, but it sort of uh, triggered a lot of interesting things for me. This is 1988. Um, this is a, this just an interesting artwork, and the cross, and it's like the Syrian type thing. Um, unknown territory could be what we're going into. Blue comes up a lot, like this blue colour, basically. So, Blue Man Group, I think this is referring to these star na- one of these star nations, probably as connected to the Syrians. I-465, you can see that as another metaphor. Italy, if you watch that video, you get the idea of these blue aliens. Blue Harvest was actually a code name for the Star Wars Return of the Jedi. They changed the... Um, when they were filming it, they referred to it as Blue Harvest, which is interesting. Or a bit on your imagination. Beatles, oh, they're quite a big band, weren't they? Yeah, so um, the music was very important, and they, they gave a very profound, you know, um, peace and love message in their song. Another band, Satanic Messages, you, know, you could refer, you know, this could be referring to the Queen and all that sort of um, stuff like that. Um, Jimi Hendrix, very important um, artist. Uh, <coughs> star person, Star Child, there's a book written about him. Story about Jesus Christ, and I won't, just, just going to rush through this because um, I'm going to show you some other slides, but he did a song about Jesus and it was very interesting, and this is it. Never actually recorded it, but um, referring to these UFOs appearing at um, the cru- after the crucifixion. Led Zeppelin, that's a crop circle, and they were they just um, brought out this the film of the um, recent concert they did a couple of years back. Another very, I think it's all again those songs referring to mankind and the, the plight of mankind, where we've been, where we're going. And that's the lyrics again. It refers to the stairway, it's like the idea of ascension and this the ISIS and. Um, the goddess retur- returning to the, um, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, she's buying a stairway to heaven. So this is, again, I think, returning to the whole god- goddess thing. Uh, there's some reverse speech things that are kind of interesting. I think when people talk, there's inf- information encoded. And I think David Oates is one of the researchers where what you say forward is actually comes out with more truth backwards where you could actually get the real truth. And I think to some degree you can do that with music as well, and it does show information. Of course, one of the popular, most popular songs, Bohemian Rhapsody, that's a very important one, where it talks about, um, again, the state of mankind, and then it talks about um, the plight of mankind involving the, the dark. Um, like the last line talks about the, uh, any way the wind blows. It's like the idea that this reality is changing, that it's um, twister, and in, it's basically about mankind. Talking Heads is another important band. This is once in a lifetime, but again, at the very end of the song, you can hear just at the very end where it says, and after the rain holds up, shame as it ever was, when a twister comes, it comes a twister. That's right, at the very, I have to find those lyrics because a lot of them didn't actually have that bit, but it's very interesting when I was listening to music, how there's information, again, it's all a bit about us and our state. Yeah, there's one, <laughs> there's one about the Queen. Um, is she a Ripsilian? Yeah, probably. God save the Queen, yeah, she's not a human being, all that sort of thing, so it's, it's interesting, you don't, uh, yeah, she ain't no human being, there's no future in England streaming, a lot of people brainwashed, I believe, by the whole royalty thing. Yeah, when there's no future, how can they be seen, we're the dust flowers in the dustbin, we're the poison, you're human, you shoot machine, we're the future, you're the future, God save the Queen, yeah, she's no human being, probably not. Another important one, if you can, this is a well-known song, if you know it, remember it, but um, I think that was to the Crown Chakra. Um, you two, of course, big band. 
That's one about with Clanner they did with Bono, a very good song, In a Lifetime, again referring to the storm, which is important. If you can, that's a really nice song. I could have gone a lot of into you two. Stone Rose is a very important band for me because I saw them 12 times this year. Um, if, if you can get hold of their album, then that's the album you want to get because that's all encoded again with the goddess and stuff like that. I want to be adored about not selling your soul and water. Again, yeah, this is referring to the earth. Chime sing Sunday morn, today's the day she sworn to steal what she never could home, uh, own and race from this hole she could calls home. Now you're at the wheel, which is the wheel of life for mankind. Tell me how does it feel? So good to have equalised, to lift up the lids of your eyes, to be awakened. As the miles they disappear, see land begin to clear. Free from the filth and the scum, this American satellite's one, which is referring to England, I believe. She'll carry on for it all. She's a waterfall. This is referring to earth. See the steeple pie in the hills as old as time, soon to be put to the test, to be whipped by the winds of the west. Again, it's talking about these winds coming in. Stands and shifting stands, the scales held in her hands. The wind just whips her and wails and fills up her brigantine sails. She'll carry on for it all. She's a waterfall. That's their second album, which is interesting. They reformed this year, as I said. Ian Brown actually it appeared in the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, it all ties in with Sirius. That's the West Irish, that's the artwork for Seahorses, John Squire's album, and you can see at the top there, that's the UK, and um, just where the jigsaw pieces are missing, that's actually where Atlantis is rising, so I just found that quite profound that he'd done that art. Quick one on Illuminati, it's another important book that I read where it was encoded with information about the Illuminati and the idea that there are these forces working behind the scenes. Justified Ancient and Moon, where the KLF is an important one, just go through this quickly. A million pounds, people couldn't really understand it, but I just think, again, this whole art thing was showing, you know, the craziness of the world we're living in, where people can spend millions for bombs and things like that, and when someone burns a million pounds, people think, well, why are you, why are you doing that? But it's really, it's really, they were getting people to question, you know, the nature of reality in my eyes, and especially with all their music as well. And uh, Oasis <laughs> ties in, I believe, with Osiris, Osiris, and also Oannis, and I'm just going to finish up with a couple more slides. Uh, live Forever, again, uh, you could go through all these songs about the ascension and about um, raising ourselves. It's all encoded, it talks about the rain, and um, maybe we, I will never be all the things that I want to be, but now is not the time to cry, now is the time to find out why. I think you're the same as me, we see things I'll never see, you and I never are going to live forever, we're going to live forever. And that's it. Another quick one from Oasis, talking about around the world, again, it's a very interesting video, if you can watch the video today, there's a lot of symbology in that. And you've got to spread the word, tell them what you've heard, you're going to make a better day. What you're going to do when the walls come falling down, you never move, you never make a sound. You're going to make, you're going, where are you going to swim with the riches that you found? The idea that people are so consumed with materialism. Uh, you're lost at sea, you're lost at sea, well I hope that you drown. Take me away, because I just don't want to stay. And the lies that you make me say are getting deeper every day. They, these are the crazy days, but they make me shine, which is referring to the aura of mankind. Time keeps rolling by all around the world. You've got to spread the word, tell them what you've heard. You're going to make a better day. Of course, the last one. Slip in, this is a famous song talking about, again, you've got the goddess stuff. Slip inside the eye of your mind. You can refer to the pineal gland. And don't you, don't you know you might find a better place to play? You said that you'd never been, but all the things that you'd seen will slowly fade away. So I'll start a revolution from my bed because you said the brains I had went to my head. Step outside, summertime's in blue, and stand up beside the fireplace. This fireplace comes up in music about things being burnt down and, and um, things burning, basically, and the house burning down. And this is referring to Earth um, and our civilization. Sally can wake the, the goddess. Um, Please don't put your hands in the life of a rock and roll band. It's sort of referring to... It's, it's an analogy like Led Zeppelin, Stone Roses, the hard and soft. You've got, like... Um, um, there's, like, mankind is, is encapsulated in sort of like a stone. Um, we, we are aiming to be sort of uh, less physical, less dense, and that's basically the ascension, like the Led Zeppelin, the idea of Led Zeppelin. Um, so Sally can wait, she knows it's too late, she's walking on by. My soul slides away, but don't look back in anger, don't look back in anger, I heard you say, at least not today. And that's really sums up what I believe it's going to be, we'll be looking back on. <laughs> Uh, just a couple of other bands, just sort of, you can go into all these bands, or you, can, you can hear them and you maybe listen to these music and you'll get a lot more out of them than you ever got, now you know this information. Okay. New Adam and Eve. So just asking the question about if all men were represented by one man and one woman at this moment, how old would they be? Are we at childhood then? 
And I'll be surrounded by metaphors and coded information. Would lyrics in songs and metaphors in books and television and movies only make sense after some imminent event, such as a monetary global government collapse and a UFO disclosure or first contact event? Are we on the verge of a collective shift in consciousness or ascension? And that's it. The end, beginning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll have a 15, 20 minute break, tea, coffee, etc. There is wine and beer available, and I'll be fancy, but that's £2 a wine and a pound of beer. Um, so, help yourself, and I'll be back in the 15 or 20 or 10.